Wendy and this is Loving It on Keto. Welcome. I wanted to give you part two of our story and this part is going to be more about my husband, Harry, than myself. And his journey and why we're both on keto today. We moved from Washington State in 2013. Uh, for various reasons. We had lived in Washington State for 20 years and our two of our kids and some of our grandkids are here in the state. We wanted to be closer to them. We wanted to get my mother, who is 87 years old, um, out of the snow and the cold, so we brought her with us. When we moved here, we moved here in April and it was already in the 80s and the 90s and we had to move two households we uh, lived in a house, we had a house waiting for us, so we needed to move into our house. And then my mom found a house eight houses away from us around the corner that we needed to actually move her into. So we were moving two complete households and it was just my husband and I and a few family members. And we were having, um, to do it mostly ourselves and it was a big job. Well, my husband kept having issues with his throat and his jaw and he would just start just breaking out in a cold stone, stone cold sweat and he was having some major issues and my daughter came over and she took one look at him and said, Dad, you need to go in and see a doctor because you're, you are gray. And so we didn't have a doctor here we had to get set up with a doctor and we had to get set up with a cardiologist. My daughter at the time worked for a hospital and she was an admin for the cardiology department actually. So she got a name of a cardiologist and got him set up and he went in and the doctor took one look at him and said we need to do a treadmill on you and walked him next door to the room where you do treadmills, did a treadmill on which he failed miserably at and said, we need to put you in the hospital and do some tests. Well, we went into the hospital, did some tests and the doctor came in and my daughter and I went into the room and he held up, had a screen and there were these really thin little lines with little teeny balls every once in a while, just like little, little beads, right? Skinny string, little beads. And I looked at it and I went, what is that? And the doctor said, that's your husband's artery. And I looked at my daughter and I instantly started crying. And he said, your husband has severe atherosclerosis. All of his arteries are clogged. He basically is a dead man walking. You're lucky that he came in and we're going to sedate him, take him up to intensive care, and we're gonna do quadruple bypass on him tomorrow morning, first thing. So, thank God the surgery went well. My husband is alive. and th I thank God every day for that. When he went into surgery, he weighed 255 pounds and he was a 48 inch waist. He's, five, he's a little shorter than I. He's about five, seven and a half. And after his surgery, once he got out of intensive care and was put into a recovery room, the doctor and the surgeon walked in and had a talk with my husband and I, and they had a serious talk. And the, the cardiologist looked at my husband and he said, you have severe atherosclerosis. You would have had a fifth artery done, except I stuck the scalpel in the end and your artery was totally clogged and I poked it and pulled out a long spaghetti noodle a pure plaque that was two and a half inches long. And as I pulled that out, the blood started to flow. So I actually was able to sew that artery up and keep it. But every single other artery was absolutely clogged. You had just enough peripheral vein, veins to keep your heart going. He said, you would not have had a heart attack. You would have dropped dead and you would have dropped dead probably within 24 to 72 hours. The doctor also said to me, if, and I said, what can we do? 
I mean, I am willing to do whatever it takes as far as food, diet, you know, I'm the cook, what, what can we do? And my husband agreed, you know, he wanted to do whatever the doctor said. And he said, well, if you want to live, you'll eat nothing with a face and nothing with a mother. He was Seventh-day Adventist and he was a strict uh, vegetarian and he absolutely believed in a whole food plant-based diet. So that night after I kissed my husband goodbye and came home, I literally gutted my house and I started watching everything there was to do with whole food plant-based diet. I got on the whole food plant-based diet bandwagon and another thing the doctor said, and I forgot about this, he said, no salt and no oil, no fat, no oils. I want him on a whole food plant-based diet with no oils and no salt. And I listened to everything that he had to say and then I went home and I researched it. I YouTubed it, I bought every book on the subject and that's the way we went. We first started out doing vegetarian. It was very hard for me to give up cheese. I loved my cheese, but I didn't have any cheese and I didn't have any oil at the house. Now, my mom, I take my mom out to dinner on Tuesday nights. She comes over to our house on Thursday nights and I cook and we watch shows and TV. Um, her and I go to church on Sundays and then we go out afterwards and have lunch. So I still remained a vegetarian at that time because I felt if I couldn't eat the diet, if I couldn't eat the way the doctor said, I can't expect my husband to. So literally we ate the same things and it was hard for my husband to make decisions because he didn't understand the diet very well and it was hard for him and I was the one doing the reading and the researching. So he said, can you do me a favor? If we go out to eat, you just order for me or tell me what I can have and I'll eat it. So anyway, as time went on, you know, things didn't change. He was on 12 different medications. His weight was, wasn't moving very well. Um, it took him a long time to get well from that. He was on oxygen for three months. He was very unhealthy. And I persisted and pursued and then decided, well, now we really need to get a, a stricter. We need to become more just a straight vegan. And I hate to say this, but it wasn't for the animal PETA reasons. It was all about health and trying to get my husband healthy so I could have him for a very long time. So basically, you know, we did this and he did lose weight, but he was always hungry. I mean, he would eat three huge potatoes with a ton of stir fried vegetables. And then an hour later, he'd go in. I'd always have a bunch of rice in the refrigerator and a bunch of potatoes that I baked in the refrigerator and things that he could grab. He was always hungry. He would eat two pouches of, you know, oatmeal in the morning and just be starving you know in two hours so it was very difficult at work uh, if I I would take my food to work I'd usually have potato or rice and vegetables our cafe has a great salad bar so it was easy for me to get fresh salad it was cheaper for me to buy it there because of all of the vegetables and the choices that they had I would take my um, I had a cupboard with apple cider vinegar Bragg's apple cider vinegar I had amino acids I had all these condiments that I could use at work and we just weren't it wasn't really working for us I was hungry I started becoming so sluggish um, my husband and I suffered from brain fog we found out from having his surgery that that actual heart patients after having the surgery can have that so we weren't thinking that it was caused from our diet. We thought that it was part of what he was going through with his um, atherosclerosis. Something happened in August of 2018. My husband started having issues again. He started feeling like his teeth were bothering him and his jaw started bothering him. So he made an appointment with his cardiologist, went in, they did a bunch of tests and found out that he had had a mild, silent heart attack 
and that one of the arteries had collapsed and had sealed over, had sealed shut. He didn't have an acute attack and the bottom part of his heart was slightly damaged, but he had secondary and tertiary veins that were going to it that were feeding it, so it wasn't totally dead. Well, that freaked me out, freaked my husband out, and it's like, that's it. We need to be doing something different. So that was August, September. So I started researching and I started looking on the internet and I started looking and reading and I told my husband, you know, I forgot what doctor I saw on TV and they started talking about olive oil and the benefits of olive oil and coconut oil and how bad seed oil was for you, canola and um, sunflower seeds and all the things that we had been eating and how that olive oil and coconut oil can actually help strengthen your heart. So my husband and I had a really long talk and a discussion and he, at this time, you know, I thought, let's start eating a little bit of coconut oil. Let's start eating a little bit of olive oil. Let, let me start cooking with it and see how it goes. And I said, let's do this for a month. He had an appointment with his cardiologist to have a recheck and have all of his vitals done. At this point, his, his cholesterol was like 251. His, his triglycerides were over 200. His, his, his good cholesterol was bad. His bad cholesterol, you know, was good. It was high. And he was all over the board. So he said, okay, if you think I should. And I said, yeah, I think you should. And I thought, you know, maybe we should add some chicken and add a little bit of eggs with this after reading everything and cut back a little bit on the starches and a little bit on the potatoes. And we did that for a month. And then we went to the cardiologist and I went with him. And we ha went and did his blood workup and the tests that he needed to have prior to his appointment and we went in. The doctor came in and he opened up the chart and he said, you know, hello Harry, hello Wendy, you know, what, how's it been? He opens it up, he goes, so let's take a look at this. And he looked at it and he looked at my husband and he looked at it again and he said, if I didn't know you and I didn't know your heart health, I would say you are totally normal and healthy. And he wanted to know what we had been doing. Well, we, I, I literally was holding back the tears because I thought I was killing my husband by giving him oil and, and taking him off of vegan and taking away his potatoes and his rice and his bread and all the things that I did. And I just looked at the doctor and I said, we changed his diet. And he said, what do you mean? I said, well, we're no longer vegan. I said, I started adding good oils, olive oil, coconut oil. We started adding eggs and chicken. And he said, it seems like you found the magic bullet and it's working. I would say continue to do what you're doing and come back and see me in three months. And we walked out to the parking lot and I literally broke down crying because I thought I was killing my husband for a month. I was feeding him coconut oil, I was feeding him olive oil, I was feeding him eggs, fried in oil, and his, I, I asked the doctor if I could have a copy because I keep a copy of all of his records. And I went home and I pulled out his last blood workup and he lost 100 points in his cholesterol. His LDL went down, his HDL went up. You know, his vitamin D finally came up. His vitamin D wasn't moving and he was taking like 5,000 to 10,000 units because we found out you have to have other things in order for that to work. So literally, that's when we really jumped on the keto bandwagon. I, I started doing uh, more and more with him and taking things away gradually. I didn't want to upset his system. I didn't want him to jump into it. I gradually removed the bread. I gradually removed the grains. I gradually removed the potatoes and the rice. 
and then in February we decided we were going to do full-on keto and move forward from there and when he weighed in I think he weighed in at 232 and was a size 42 mm -hmm. pants and as of today the 36 pants that we bought him last month he can actually pull off without unzipping or taking unhooking his belt so I think he needs a 34 inch waist and he weighed at 182 this morning so oh sorry folks he weighed in at 181 this morning yesterday he was 182 so he is doing fabulous he's on half of a blood pressure medicine half of a pill so we've gone from 12 pills stantons two different blood pressure pills he had bouts of gout he had issues prostate issues gout um, occasional kidney stone he was on gabapentin for pain and nerve pain he was on stantons or did I say stantons blood thinners he was on and hydrocoding he the nerves in his chest where they actually did the incision were misfiring all the time he couldn't even stand to wear a shirt right here and since he's gone on keto he's gradually been weaned off of his pills his blood pressure yesterday was 120 over 80 on half of a spherolactone he doesn't have the, the intense pain he's not eating hydrocoding like candy because of the pain and the nerve pain he is actually his brain fog is going away he's more alert as far as his uh, mental function is and um, he feels great and he's loving it and he's actually the behind the camera man that you all guys see so that's something that he's going to be there with me and together we're loving it on keto so that's it for the day folks i hope you join me again tomorrow if you like me please subscribe and give me a thumbs up.